Hi there, today I want to talk about why you should accept your first offer for a faculty position. Maybe the offer you got was not in your dream location and it maybe also wasn't exactly your dream job in terms of the description or the denomination of the professorship. Maybe the colleagues are not your optimal colleagues that you would wish for and maybe the position is just not ideal for a number of other reasons including personal reasons. But the advice I definitely give to everyone in my lab is that your first job offer you should really accept it. These offers are very rare and so if you come by one, if you earn an offer, you should accept it. Now why is that? Basically in a nutshell because it is easier to get a job if you already have a job. Now why is that? There's a number of reasons for that. I can think of five. The first one is simply the experience that you gain when you already are in the job or the kind of job that you are applying for again. You are already having some experience and you're gaining some experience as a faculty member with everything that that entails in terms of you know, balancing different tasks and advising people and being a part of committees and all of what it means to be a faculty member. You already basically are gathering experience and you can then leverage this experience when you apply for another job that maybe is your dream job. And of course, very importantly, from the perspective of the search committee of this new position that you apply for, you are automatically perceived as less risk because another university has already decided to hire you and you have presumably demonstrated that you can do this job by showing your achievements, what you have already done in this uh, previous position. The second is not to be underestimated and is the confidence that you radiate during an interview and as you interact with people during the interview, if you don't come across as quote unquote desperate because you already have a job basically, <laughs> then this will be noticed by people that interview you. I think there uh, is some subliminal messages that you send that you are actually somebody desirable to hire because you already have this other position. And of course, this is not just perceived, but is also real because by having already done this job, you do have the confidence that you can design courses and teach courses. You can advise students and mentor students at all kinds of different levels that you can function in the context of a university campus and so on. And of course that also means that you could have already submitted grants and having grant income, independent grant income is often very important in hiring decisions. So if you are the head of the lab you can already submit grants for example in your name much more easily at least in many countries that is the case and so thus uh, this also helps you in your next application basically. The third point is you are already establishing yourself in the professional community of which you are part, let's say like the ecological community or the soil science community or whatever have you. And so basically as a faculty member you become a more serious member of that community, let's say, and you're basically becoming much better connected to your professional network in that new role as a faculty member. This will help you in your new application because it has improved the uh, standing that you have in your own scientific community. The fourth point is that you can automatically be much more selective in the jobs that you apply for because you already have a job. So you already have that security basically from which you operate. So you can pick and choose much more the schools, departments, the colleagues, the locations and whatever that are really appealing to you so you pre-select, you basically have a much stronger filter as you apply for the next job. So by then focusing on the positions that truly align with your goals and with your skills, you have automatically also much higher chances for them because of all the other points that I already mentioned. And the fifth point is your negotiation power. So if you already have a job, then there is much more of an attitude at the next institution that they have to win you from the other institution. So you can negotiate from a completely different position than if you have 
no faculty position already. Uh, because then basically the, the university hiring you, I mean, of course they want you to, to be successful and they will give you what you need to be successful. I think this should be assumed generally to be the case. But I think you have a much weaker um, negotiation position. So if there are some things that you really need, um, you're much more likely to get them when you're already in that position that you have a faculty position. Now, I believe these five points to be really true. I mean, they do really help you to basically attain the position of your dreams, so to speak, if you are not already in the position that you really wanted in the first place. You know, having said that, of course, your compromise, <laughs> the position that you accepted, even though maybe you were not so excited about it, it may turn out to be just great because you, in the end, never really know what it's like to be in a place until you're actually there. So, I mean, in my career, I don't think I dreamed of being at University of Montana, let's say, for example, that was not at my at the top of my list. But once I was there, I really loved it. I had actually no real desire to leave and it was a fine place to do science. But that, of course, was completely not obvious from the very beginning. So sometimes also things fall into place when you're at a university that wasn't really at the top of your list. But then that's great, right? Then you don't have a, a real impetus to move and then you have already arrived. So this is also fine. This is a, um, another outcome uh, that's possible by accepting that first job that is offered to you. However, there is also one <laughs> noteworthy exception to this general rule, and that is the following. If at this position that is being offered to you, that first job, you come away with not being able to do what you set out to do. Not being able, for example, to conduct research because this is a more teaching intensive institution or because you cannot really conduct the kind of research that you want because the equipment isn't there, the facilities are not there, the colleagues are not there or whatever is the case, then really you probably shouldn't do it because then you don't accrue the benefits that I've just mentioned then you basically run the risk of falling behind. Then you cannot really leverage that position as an advantage to attain the next position that is the one that maybe you find more desirable. So whenever that is the case, you have to very, very carefully think this through because by accepting such a position, you may in the end actually make it less likely for you to attain the position of your dreams because you know you may just end up teaching for example or you may not be able to really conduct the research that you want to do and that is probably too high a price to pay so with that one exception i really believe that if you get your first job offer you take it you make it work the best you can you try to make that appointment help you attain the next position that is really the position of your dreams. I think this is a good strategy because if you, you know, keep waiting for that perfect job, you may end up not getting one. It's a very competitive world out there. And also you simply do not know when these positions at the universities you really want end up arriving. And so that is much too uncertain. In the meantime, you know, you need to have that stability of a permanent position or a position with a tenure track, let's say. So that is the recommendation. And with that, I hope you get that first offer and I hope then you also take it. Thanks and see you in the next one. Bye.